welcome to the channel and thank you for subscribing if you've already done it if you haven't done it it's a good thing go ahead and do that thing down below today we are making a mushroom loaf here at slow foods kitchen the home of awesome kale chips uh, this is where we do it and this is also where we teach you how to eat awesome like we do so mushroom loaf it was guaranteed i will guarantee it will make any of your carnivorous friends happy just don't tell them it's vegan okay so we're gonna saute some veggies to start with so i put about a teaspoon of a good virgin coconut oil actually i bought oh i didn't buy the brand i usually buy but i could tell by looking at it it's a really good brand it's just called made with and it's virgin cold pressed coconut oil so coconut oil goes a lot longer good lot it just it's more effective than say a corn oil or a olive oil so just a little teaspoon let's turn it on um hmm. on there we go and we're going to stir fry so we're going to push that button oh 400 no, i don't want to stir fry it says 464 degrees i'm going to go down to um minus i'm going to go about 320 so I'm going to, for I know most of you experienced cooks know how to chop veggies. So for all of you new young kids out there that want to learn how to cook, see how I got all my celery, same length. And then I'm just going to take my knife and bend my fingers. And so my knife is hitting my knuckles and not taking off my fingernails. And then I'm just going to take these big pieces and I'm going to think of it as making julian sticks. I'm just going to keep chopping and chopping and chopping until I get these sticks as, about as skinny as I can get them. I used to do this when I made tuna fish salad for the kids when they were little and I chopped it so fine they didn't even know they had, were eating onions and celery. So they grew up and started hanging out in the kitchen and they're like, what are you doing putting that stuff in our food? I'm like, been in it for, so then I got them all nice and chopped into thin pieces. And I gather them up and then I just chop the other way. See, get my, bend my uh, knuckles so that I can actually hold the knife up against my knuckles and not worry about cutting off my fingertips. Ah. So, and then we just, uh, all done. Oh, the coconut oil is melted. I'm gonna get some coconut oil. This electrical uh, hot plate does not like it when the pot comes off the heater. So we'll throw the celery in here. Oh, just right. You hear the sizzle? Okay, now we're gonna chop. Uh, that was supposed to be, what's well, in the recipe? Mm -mm, half a cup and then we're going to use the one and a half cups of cool, one and a quarter cups of chopped onions so we're going to cut off both ends of the onion take off the top layers of skin until you get rid of all the old brown dry stuff yeah so I'm sauteing at 320 degrees and it looks like it's doing a great job Gonna give me some time to get the onion cut. Celery takes a little longer anyway, so throw your celery in first and then do all that other chopping. There we go. All right, so then again, I know most of you know how to cut an onion, but for those youngins that are just getting started, I cut the onion in half. I lay it, and you notice we have the layers going this way. We're going to Slice it about eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch this way. Turn it and then cut opposite. And it's just going to automatically come out in pretty little pieces. And so I said a quarter, a cup and a quarter. That looks like a cup and a quarter to me. Yeah, probably need a little more. So I'm going to cut just a couple more slices. Get 
that quarter cup in there. There we go. Mmm. Now we're going to. Mmm. Oh. Strong onions. Wow. It up a little bit. See, you don't need a lot of oil. You just need just enough oil so it doesn't stick to the pan. Because once it starts to cooking, uh, the you know the onion's going to release its oils. The celery is going to get moist and break down. Now the other ingredient that we're going to also saute is now the re the recipe calls for two cups of portobello's, but you know. Um, I like white button mushrooms too, actually. I've become more of a fan of the white buttoned mushroom. Because what I've read about white button, about mushrooms in general, is it's not important which mushroom you eat in your diet. It's important that you eat, they say only a half a mushroom a day. But we're going to cut up these. We're going to dice them, which is a dice that would be like quarter inch cubes, so to speak. So we're going to slice them one way about quarter inches. We'll turn them and we'll do the same thing. And then we're going to cut, turn the board and we're just going to go again the other way about every quarter of an inch just to get ourselves some nice big dices. Now we're going to saute the vegetables for a few minutes until they just start to get um, well, we could say al dente. We don't want them super soft, but we don't want them totally crunchy because it is going to bake actually in the oven for 75 minutes at 350. That sounds like a long way, but this is one dish you don't want to undercook. So I said this is going to be about two cups when I get all of these chopped. And you know, like I've, you've heard me say, if you've watched before that. Um, Recipes are guides, and uh, generally you can make little changes, add a little more of this or a little less of that, and generally it won't make a difference. Sometimes it does, and if it does, I would certainly let you know. So I said two cups. I'm sure I had about a cup and a half the first time. And this is definitely more than two cups. <laughs> there we go. Okay. In the pan. Stir it up. Oh, we have some garlic to put in here. We always use fresh garlic. And garlic is something that you want to add like at the very end, the last minute or two. Because you don't want it to get overdone. You just want it to start to release its flavorful oils. That's what we want it to do. So, double check our list. We got the celery, the mushrooms, the onions. And we're going to uh, chop this garlic. I like using uh, garlic press, but I don't have my garlic press here today. So I'm going to take my knife. I'm going to lay out the garlic. And I'm going to put the garlic under the knife. Push the knife to flatten it out. Just to make them, on this, these garlics were frozen, so they're behaving a lot more than they would if they were fresh. We still do it with fresh. So now they're all kind of flat. Just makes it easier to give it a quick chop one way. Nice little thin slices. Turn your knife and just cross cut it so they're all nice little pieces. Don't be afraid to play with your food. <laughs> oh, there we go. Looking good. Smelling good. Oh. Well, usually, the, you know, the onion, the, excuse me, mushrooms are have a lot of moisture in them. And as you start to cook them, they're going to sweat a lot. So I was almost thinking I needed a little moisture in here. But I'm just going to let it saute on its own. 
So, I'm going to let that go over a little bit. I'm going to leave it on low because I have other things to do. So, I'm going to, see right here I have, um, this is salt, sage, basil, oregano, and some thyme. And you'll notice in the part, in the recipe below, that we also have parsley in the recipe, but um, we don't have any parsley, so we just left it out. That goes back to the old, hey, it's just a recipe. It's not gonna, um, who's gonna know? How are they gonna know, right? <laughs> How are they gonna know? Leave it out. <laughs> so we're gonna put in the garlic. I'm gonna go, and the spices, I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up and get it out of the way so we can move on to the wonderful ingredient of tofu. I don't believe. I am going to need the knife one more time. Look at this. Trying to keep it, make it fairly clean. I don't think you can see the mess over here, can you? Keep that mess out of the camera, right? So, the tofu. I put it back here. So, the secret to the tofu, this tofu is extra firm organic green wise from our local grocer. We buy it all the time, it's tasty. So it has been frozen and we thawed it out after it was good and frozen. And what that does is that act changes the texture of the tofu. So let's open it up. I'm just gonna slice down here. I'm gonna take the tofu out. Okay. So, the tofu is now, if you can really tell, it looks like a sponge, and it actually acts like a sponge, feels like a sponge, and we're going to squeeze it out. But to make it squeeze out really good, just took the gadgets I had around the kitchen here, uh, one pan to catch the liquid, one pan to, s or a, two plates work really good, like uh, six inch dessert plates, and we're going to put the tofu in between, and we're just going to push. So if you had two dinner plates you'd just be holding it up in the air you know squeezing it and you want to get as much water out as possible because remember it's now like a sponge texture so here we have this wonderful sponge texture the liquid's been removed and now it's ready to soak up flavors in certain recipes um you've seen some our other recipe we made vegan jambalaya and we, this is where the tofu stayed. Anyway, a great recipe, but we're not doing that today. But check it out. It's great. But we are going to squeeze out the water out of the other piece. Now we're going to take the tofu prepared. We're going to put the tofu into this lovely food processor. So we're going to, I'll just break it up into some big chunks to help it get started. There we go, big chunks. Let's stir the veggies. Veggies. I'm going to give the veggies a little bit of water. Just a little bit. Let me fill that up for me again. Uh, I just needed a little moisture. Um, needed to clean the bottom of the pan to get the flavors off the bottom of the pan where the veggies were um, browning a little bit too much on the bottom. So I added a little water, created steam, cleaned the pan right off, and all those flavors now that we're on the pan are going to be in our dish. Awesome, right? So we're gonna, we have the tofu prepped in here. We're going to add five tablespoons of water approximately. I'm going to add two tablespoons. Now the recipe calls for arrowroot, but once again, we use it all. So we're going to use some non-GMO cornstarch. Um, one, two, and then we're also going to use two tablespoons of Bragg's liquid aminos. Better choice over soy sauce. You can get Bragg's in organic. I would highly recommend organic. So there's two tablespoons of our Bragg's. Now we are going to blend till smooth. OK, 
Okay, on. Ta da! Let's turn the power on. <laughs> yeah, let's uh, stir the veggies a little bit. And I think that, you know what, we're going to, um, before we turn them off, we're going to put in that garlic. Remember, I told you to put in the garlic, and we're going to let that just give it a about a minute. That's all it needs to get the garlic started, and then we're going to turn it off. Okay, so let's turn this on. So we're going to let that completely get chopped up. Now, um, if we had not frozen the tofu, it would be really creamy, you know, like a salad dressing creaminess, like a thick, but this, because it was frozen and the texture is now like a sponge, the texture of this mixture is different. It's going to be more sustain, uh, sustenance, you know, because we're making a baked loaf. Looking good, so I'm going to scrape down one time. Oops, not with a celery, how about one of these? <laughs> We're just gonna scrape down the sides, we'll do it one time. And then make sure everything's equal. We're gonna turn this off. We'll let that go. Then we're going to take all the ingredients that we've prepped, put them in a big, large mixing bowl. You know, I could have done it in this saute pan, really, to save from washing another pan. But, so we're show and tell. We're gonna dirty up as many dishes as we can. So that's, we're gonna stir it up. Oh, man, that smells yummy. We'll take this. So. just like me to put that in a hot pan and go back later and go, oh, look, I ruined another kitchen tool. <laughs> so, come on, you. Off! I'm going to show you. See how nice and creamy that looks? <laughs> yeah, so freezing it is important. It, it will make a difference. If you didn't freeze it and wondered what, what went wrong, well, that's, it went wrong. Went south, as they said. <laughs> there we go. Alrighty, not in the hot pan. Okay. We got the vegetables, we got the tofu, and we're also going to put in one and a half cups of cooked rice. Pre cooked white rice, use brown if you like. Use, you know, I really like black rice. I think we should try this in with the black rice sometime. There we go. So we got the rice. Let's see what else is on the list here. We have, we already put the garlic in, half a teaspoon of fresh ground black pepper. Oh, that was all in the spices. Right, right, right. Hmm. So it also calls for three quarters of a cup. This is pre-measured oat flour. I get a little frustrated sometimes walking around the store looking for flour. So, you know, just we just take oats off the shelf, put it in our high-powered blender. You can do it in a regular blender, too, and just turn it into flour. I've done it with rice, too. Uh, I got so tired of looking for rice one time at the grocery store, I just said, you know what? I have a blender. I've got rice. I went home and did it, and it came out wonderful. And oatmeal flour is a wonderful thing. Oatmeal flour and do lots of it. So now we're just going to stir all this up. Make sure I didn't forget anything. Mm-hmm. Yep, it's just that easy. So we're just gonna stir it all up really well. Get the rice and the tofu coated on everything. Man, this is looking good, smelling good. Yeah. And I have had people over for dinner serve this and they were not vegans and they had insisted on having the recipe. It's, it's really good. People that don't eat good when they do eat good, they just think it's phenomenal that food can taste so good. So cook it up and serve it with your friends. So we're going to put this in a loaf pan. We're going to cook it at 350 for 75 minutes. And it's important to make sure it's like really done, the top slightly crisp, and the sides of the loaf on the pan start to pull in a little bit that tells you it's done same thing with like your brownies and cakes same thing 
Okay, I think we got this mixed up pretty good. Put all this away. Let's get our, here's our pre-oiled. Looks like there has been a little, uh, just a slight bit of coconut oil rubbed on there. We will take our favorite spatula because it's rubbery and it bends real well and it's made by Farberware and it comes apart for cleaning. Cool, use it all the time. So we are going to fill the pan. Fill the low pan and we're gonna put a little bit of pressure on there so that it's nicely shaped and firm. Don't want the air pockets. Okay, get all that out of the picture. Not so, I'm gonna push it in. First thing we'll do is we'll push it in, get this stuff out so you can see. Evenly. Mm -hmm -hmm. Now even though these mushrooms look a little chunky by the time it's cooked, now they just kind of all blend in. It slices really nice, just like a, a meatloaf. Hmm. So, after I get it all kind of level and firm, I'm just going to go around and at an angle, give it a little shape and um, bring it off the sides of the pan like that. Okay. Give it that little nice loaf look. And then pop her in the oven, 350. Guess what we're having at our house for Thanksgiving? We're gonna have a mushroom loaf. There we go, check that out. I should be a real artist with our food. Learn to play with your food. Okay. Off to the oven we go. Check back in an hour and 15 minutes. <laughs> and serve it with gravy. Look for the video. Oh, and you know what? Up here. Or what is up there? Oh, it's about the link for the gravy. So I was told it was up here. So check up there and click on it. And if it doesn't work, you email us and then we're going to get on to Amanda and make her make it work. Okay. Time to bake. Bye. Hey, I found my glasses. <laughs> we baked our mushroom loaf for 75 minutes, 350 degrees. Actually, I have a gas stove. It runs a little hot, so I went to about 330 for 75 minutes. And um, this is what we got. We're going to do a little taste test. Yep, seeing it went, I mean, it's pulled away from the pan nice no no sticking to the pan can we cut ourselves a nice three-quarter inch thick slice and then we're going to lift and serve yeah. there we go let's check this out so here is mushroom loaf if I didn't know any better I'd say it looked like a pork roast let's see what it tastes like Mm-mm-mm. Mmm. Mm. Oh, it's tasty. Mmm. That's really tasty. Boy, let's mash some potatoes and go make gravy. Mmm. Mmm, good. Mmm. Remember, I said, don't worry about Chuck chopping the mushrooms real small because it's going to cook in and blend in and that's just what it's done it's cooked you can't really see that there's hunks of mushrooms and it doesn't really taste mushroomy for all you not mushroom lovers so until next time have a great weekend bye mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. finish this <laughs> Everything bakes, yeah. But you're not gonna wanna freeze it because you're gonna eat it up.
gonna be so good. Bye. Hold on, I lost your phone. my rag, mama. Rag, mama. Well, it's probably under here. Mm, there it is.